Ladies and gentlemen, thank you as always for tuning into the channel. Uh, we got a lot of pretty crazy news um, for you guys today. Um, first off, I do want to briefly recap on uh, the previous video because we have some news on that today. Um, in the last video, we discussed that Genesis was seeking $1 billion, Genesis Exchange, was seeking $1 billion in essentially emergency funding uh, without many specifics as to why. Um, and this got a lot of people concerned because if you aren't aware, Genesis Exchange is a major um, OTC exchange for institutional investors, people with big money. Um, and the fact that they were seeking these funds out of the blue without really giving specifics, especially with this whole FTX collapse and a lot of other exchanges um, having issues as well, this got people really concerned. Another thing that concerned people is that Digital Currency Group, which is the parent company for Genesis, um, also... Uh, owns about five other companies in the crypto space. Uh, the three notable is Genesis, Coindesk, the news platform, and uh, Grayscale. Grayscale is a big, big player in the space. Um, I believe they are the third or fourth largest Bitcoin holders in the world right now. Um, they hold 635,000 Bitcoin absolutely insane um and they are also an otc platform for institutional investors so everyone with the big money they go to go to genesis or they go to um grayscale to invest their funds if they don't want to um hold uh btc directly um so the fact that digital currency group the parent company um is seeking a billion dollars for uh, Genesis is very, very concerning, especially considering, again, that uh, Grayscale pretty much could be in trouble as well. Um, so their deadline for that was Monday, which is today, and uh, we haven't heard anything yet. Um, it's really tricky right now finding uh, investors for any company in the crypto space. A lot of uh, institutional investors do not want to touch anything crypto related right now and unfortunately i gotta kind of understand why you know everything is so certain and any company left right and center whether they look robust they could be on the verge of bankruptcy that's just the brutal truth uh, we actually found out that over 100 companies that were involved in ftx uh, invested uh, in ftx uh, ha are going bankrupt. Over 100, 100 crypto startups and uh, established companies that were involved in FTX are going out of business uh, or at least filing for bankruptcy and could be going out of business uh, down the road. So uh, yeah, it's really uncertain times for um, anyone in the crypto space and for any of these big companies to want to put money into something crypto related. Uh, it's just really, really hard right now, especially considering if you look at the stock market, you know, there's not really one stock out there that's doing uh, much better than um, crypto stuff. So um, next up, I do want to discuss um, some big regulatory concerns. Uh, Biden, the Biden administration announced that U.S. President Biden urges stricter global cryptocurrency regulation in light of the FTX collapse. Um, the word in this statement that concerns me the most is global. He is pushing for countries around the world to unite in order to pass some regulatory framework that affects uh, the major, major countries in the world. Um, and that's honestly terrifying. Um, I, I totally agree. We do need some regulation in place. So, uh, you know, exchanges like FTX um, can, we could prevent stuff like this from happening in the future. I totally get that. Um, but what concerns me is that, you know, when you have uh, pretty much uh, a blanket regulation over 
pretty much every major country in the world for cryptocurrencies, it's going to drastically stunt innovation. It's going to drastically slow down the industry. And this is still a, a new technology. Yes, it was invented in 2000 and, uh, 2008, but it is still very, very new in the world around us. And to just stunt the growth with some regulation that is pretty much going to be designed for Web 2.0, um, is really going to affect the space if something like this does happen. And the great thing too about having um, regulation all around the world, different having different regulation all around the world, is it drives competition. It dry it does drive innovation. It um, allows for different countries to compete. Um, and it's quite concerning that they they they're even considering this. Um, now, uh, the, this is, I guess you could say, speculation, but in my opinion, it's no doubt in my eyes that this whole FTX collapse, maybe it wasn't planned, but it damn well looks like it could have been. I mean, considering SBF was pretty much buddy-buddy with the White House, um, and we're talking about the top dogs. We're not talking about like a Democratic senator here and there. We're talking about President Biden, second largest donor. We're talking about being buddy buddy with the World Economic Forum, Charles Schwab, uh, not Charles Schwab, uh, Charles Schwab, the the head of the World Economic Forum, uh, the the company that wants you to own nothing and be happy. Those people, the Great Reset people. Uh, so FTX was in deep ties um, with all of these these elites and obviously we know his parents were as well so it's really not far-fetched to think the FTX collapse was intentional allowing um, the government to have a reason to step in and uh, also uh, giving some sort of reason where both left and right can agree on something um, for a change so that's just my take on things I could totally be wrong it, this could just be a coincidence but honestly you know how many coincidences are there in the world now i mean it seems like every conspiracy theory ends up being true two years down the line um so we'll just have to of course sit on that and see but that is most certainly uh very concerning that they want to pretty much put blanket regulation over the entire industry all around the world um i can't imagine many countries participating in such regulation but you can damn well expect the united states pretty much all the west allies uh, to probably participate and that's a good chunk of cryptocurrency investors um Next up and lastly, I briefly want to discuss uh, the FTX hacker. Um, if you guys aren't aware, about a week and a half ago, um, supposedly FTX was hacked for 400 plus million dollars. Um, and it looks like it was actually SBF that had a back door to the exchange. And he was uh, forced by uh, the Bohemian government to withdraw all the funds and hand them over to Bahamas version of their SEC. Um, we don't know why they wanted to do such a thing. I mean, yes, they were based in uh, the Bahamas. So of course they have the, the, the reasoning to do such a thing. Um, but the reason I bring this up is over the past 24 hours, it does appear that they have began to dump uh, the Ethereum that they were holding. Keep in mind, they were, I believe, the 27th largest Ethereum wallet in the world. We're talking about a lot of money. And they started dumping a, a good chunk of the funds here and there um, into Bitcoin, which caused a pretty uh, large dump uh, uh, for the price of Ethereum, not solely based on the amount of Ethereum they were dumping on the spot market, but the sole fact that everyone else was scared that it was going to cause an effect, which made it much worse than it probably would have been. Um, so that's something we can definitely look forward to um, here and there moving forward. They dumped, I believe, around $50 million so far, and they have a little over 400 mil. Uh, so we still have a ways to go, but that's mostly why, likely why uh, uh, the markets are looking pretty red over the past couple days. Um, so it's hard to say if that's going to turn around anytime soon. Um, but I'm also curious to know what is the government in B the Bahamas going to do with these funds? Um, no disrespect to them. Uh, but like I believe I talked about in the last video, uh, when I went to the Bahamas, great, you know, we're there for vacation, we're having a good time. But when you really look at 
the the lifestyle that the bohemian people have it's pretty rough you know uh the the majority of the islands uh, are still out of power from a hurricane back in 2017 and aside from that you know the government officials the the local police um officers it looks like they're kind of li living pretty good you know they're driving brand new cars they got very clean facilities uh compared to you know the average citizen over there is uh, potentially living without AC in the Bahamas. That's crazy. So we'll see what they do with these funds, if the US has any say in all of this. Obviously, FTX US is completely different from FTX in the Bahamas. So I also do find it pretty, pretty funny how uh, the Biden administration is using FTX as an excuse, considering their main platform was not based in the United States where the majority of the funds were. Um, FTX US was very, very small and technically a completely different company uh, from FTX. But of course, FTX had their name on the Miami Heat Stadium. So, you know, it does deserve some recognition, recognition from, um, you know, the higher ups in the White House, no doubt. I just wish they, uh, they would be uh, a little more lenient when it comes to the laws that overall they're trying to pass. Um, in the crypto space. So let me know what you guys think about all this crazy news down below. And if you found this video informative, I would greatly appreciate a big thumbs up as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next.